Good morning and welcome to this morning's reflection. As we know, our planet is at a crossroads. Our consumerism, our war making and materialism have destroyed many species, melted polar ice caps, changed weather patterns and put humanity and the whole world at risk. We need a transformation of values. We need a change of heart. Now someone who can be an example for us is Francis, Francis of Assisi. Francis saw God's handiwork in every creature. Born from divine creative wisdom, the non-human world was to be cherished and protected. Heaven and earth praise God and reflect God's creative energy. God inspires us and the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. All things reflect God's handiwork. All creation praises God. God has not deserted us. We have neglected God's revelation in all creatures great and small. We have forgotten our own divine heritage. Francis of Assisi reminds us that divinity is present in every creature. We can see beauty in every face and honour life in all its forms. Centuries later, Albert Schweitzer described this attitude in terms of reverence for life. Seeing the holiness in creation, seeing that holiness challenges us to claim our role as planetary healers through living a simpler lifestyle. Through protection of endangered species, and protection of our wilderness lands, and advocacy for policies that respond to global climate change. We can celebrate life by living just more simply. We can prayerfully consider our patterns of consumption and discover how our local community can respond to global climate change. Life is beautiful, and God calls us as partners in healing the planet, locally and globally. The Quakers use a word, cumber, to describe the possessions that often possess us. Cumber describes an attitude of mind as well as matter. Our lives can be cumbered and complicated by too many tasks and too little focus. Our days can be filled with one event after another and no coherence to our overall schedule. We can be possessed by our possessions and controlled by our technologies. In contrast, Jesus says, seek first God's realm and its righteousness and you will have everything you need. Francis discovered the simplicity of life and he discovered that simplicity is in fact the key to God's kingdom. Downwardly mobile. He chose to focus on serving God in every encounter and responding to the deep needs of everyone that he met. His focus changed from self-interest to world loyalty. Following Lady Poverty meant living simply, trusting God, and putting God ahead of everything else, including possessions, power, and financial stability. Downward mobility presents a challenge to us all. We may seek 
to live more simply, and yet we live in a comfortable house, perhaps in a safe neighborhood, perhaps we live in spaces that provide hospitality for our children, for our grandchildren, and for our families and friends. Simplicity is a spiritual and ethical issue. The wisdom of the hedgehog in daily life is to know one thing and have one focus in the many tasks of each day. My sense of simplicity involves listening to that advice, do something beautiful for God. But we need to follow Mahatma Gandhi's advice to live simply so that others may simply live. We need to see our possessions and personal economies in the light of the well-being of others. This economy of grace will enable others to live more fully as well as to be a first step toward an ecological, affirming and economically just civilization. Francis lived during the dark days of the Crusades. The Church promised that liberating Jerusalem from the hated Muslims ensured a heavenly reward. In the heat of battle, many faithful asserted that the only good Muslim was one that was dead. In this climate of hate, Francis chose to walk across the desert in the desert heat to share the good news of Jesus with an Egyptian sultan, Malik al Kamal. Francis's courage and openness perplexed and then won over the sultan. While the sultan never became a follower of Jesus, Francis's Christ like trust changed his heart. Francis encountered the Sultan as a fellow spiritual seeker and not as an enemy. Despite a growing affirmation of pluralism, it is a fact that racial, ethnic, religious and sexual diversity still fragment and polarise our world. Gridlock abounds in the halls of the U.S. Congress as extremists see any act of compromise as a treason of their cause. Legislators sacrifice essential services to ideology. Indeed, some Christians see the world in terms of the saved and the unsaved, the in and out, the black and white, despite the fact that Jesus presented a table open to everyone, Sinners and saints, oppressors and freedom fighters, women and men, sick and healthy, clean and unclean. Francis is known for the saying, preach always, if necessary, use words. When encountering the stranger and the enemy, we are called to let our actions of kindness and gentleness display our faith. As Francis and his followers greeted everyone with the words, God grant you peace. Francis embodied the peace that joins enemies and creates friendships by seeing the holy in everyone. Francis discovered God in the face of a leper. Initially repulsed by the man's disfigurement, Francis experienced God's call to go beyond appearances to experience God's image in his face. Francis dared to reach out to who had been repulsive and brought healing through a divine kiss. Francis's call to peacemaking is more than just saying the peace of Christ be with you in the passing of the peace at church. It involves a commitment to see the divine in each person and to behave in such a way that others discover their own holiness. And so today, may you seek peace, peace with the planet, peace with the natural world, peace with your neighbour and peace with yourself. May you be blessed today. Amen.